Hey everyone, Morgan and husband here. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about some types of communication. Now, some people may not have anybody to communicate with and that's totally fine, but for those of us who have people who want to communicate you know, uh, with, then there are several options so um, when it comes to your cell phone, you know, cell towers in emergency or disaster will only be able to handle so many calls, first of all. So cell phones will only work for a particular amount of time. You may be able to text. Texts may be able to get through um, for a short amount of time. But even then, you know, if it's like a total power outage, you know, the cell phones could get so overloaded or the cell phone towers rather could get so overloaded that eventually just no calls will be getting through. And eventually the cell towers will fail anyway, just because um, the cell towers need power to work. And well. yeah, I was, I was going to say that the cell towers need power. Yeah. So if, if the cell towers don't even have power to begin with, you know, um, then it's just not going to work at all. Uh, outside of that um, would be landline phones. A lot of pay phones are still landline phones. A lot of people have told me that um, landlines are working on the cell service, but um, I can clearly see that landlines are still very much there, connected to... There, there, still are, there are landline services that use cellular or that use the internet and they piggyback on these other services. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of be cognizant of, you know, what you're using. If it is a landline, whether it's an, a true landline or if it's a service that, you know, needs power like the cellular or um, your DSL or, you yeah. know, internet, something v, uh, VOIP. So some pay phones may work on a cellular um, system, but um, pay phones, landlines, they could still be viable options. Now, outside of all of that, let's say you don't have those options available. What other type of communications do you have? We have to think of a variety of things here. We have to think about the fact that um, how far are you from people? And, um, you know, so like a uh, husband works about 20-ish Yeah, miles about 20, away. 20, 22 miles away from home. 20 or to 22 miles away. What the heck outside of a phone or a landline can I do to communicate with him if those things aren't down? Smoke signals. <laughs> that is a, uh, well, it's something. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, there is always ham. So uh, husband's going to take it from here when we talk about ham and we're going to talk about several other things. So uh, let's talk about ham here. So the first thing I want to say about ham radio is um, you need to be licensed. Uh, the FCC issues amateur radio licenses uh, to people that want the license. Uh, it's a quick study guide, and there's three levels of the test. You can study and take uh, one or all of them. Um, so both of us, as you probably know already, have taken the test, and we've gotten our ham licenses. I um, have my technician. He has his extra. I got my extra. <laughs> I did all three tests. Um, um, now, real quick before uh, we go on, you can get a ham radio and just listen, okay, if you don't yes. have your license already. That's what we did for a long time. Um, yeah, we've had, we've had one of these little radios for years, and we would listen to it on occasion, um, but we finally got to a point where we wanted to actually use them and transmit. So we, you know, did our due diligence, got our licenses. It is a whole new world once you actually start transmitting and, and learning everything. Absolutely. But you can still get it and just listen. Um, and sometimes listening and getting information during a crisis could be just as valuable as, you know, transmitting. So yeah. um, just throwing that out there. So I'm just, I'm just going to give a real quick brief overview, but there's basically um, three different ranges of frequencies that uh, ham radios use uh, for the most part, uh, amateurs at least, is uh, UHF and VHF, which is uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency, and those are both uh, can be used on most all handhelds. Some handhelds do one or the other. Others like this one do both. Um, and then the other is... HF, high frequency. Um, those tend to be the lower frequency waves. They go a lot further. Um, and you typically won't find them in a handheld. Some handhelds, maybe I think I've seen a couple of them that'll yeah. go a little bit into it. But for the most part, you're going to need a... They're usually dedicated radios. 
And, uh, you know, we've, we've got one right here. It's, uh, this is the head unit for the radio. The radio itself that goes with it is, you know, put away. But, uh, yeah, so HF radios are usually their own beast. Um, in emergency or disasters, you do not technically need a license to transmit, okay? So if you do have one of these, um, you know, you can transmit. But the thing about the license is you actually learn how to transmit. You cannot learn to transmit. Not just learning how to transmit, but also the capabilities of and the testing of. Because there's times where, you know, we think something's going to work great, but then there's obstructions or something, yeah. you know, doesn't go quite right. We're learning as now radio operators that, okay, well, this is not a favorable condition or I should do this instead of that. So it's, it, I would highly advise getting your license, even if you don't need your license during an emergency or disaster, that's fine, but you, you may not have any idea how to even use this radio. I mean, I looked at this as a very foreign object, you know, before I got my license when we were just listening in. And now I look at it in a lot more confident light. So, um, you know, you like I said, you can transmit an emergency or disaster without a license, but it's it would just be um, a lot more difficult if you don't know how. You know, um, it's a little different beast than just turning on a radio. You know, any other handheld radio or anything. So, um, with technician and general and extra, you have various levels of um, frequencies that you can reach. So with, uh, with the base license, the technician license, uh, the, you, you have access to VHF, UHF, um, and that's used on repeaters, um, mostly. Uh, you know, different clubs have repeaters, or you might even, you know, apply for a license to get a repeater. But they, they work through repeaters, and you can also talk radio to radio. Mm -hmm. um, that usually... You know, you depending on your antenna and how what your elevation is like, you can get several miles range out of that. Mm -hmm. um, there is a repeater that is over by my work about 20 miles from here. Line of sight, maybe it's 18, 19 miles from here. And we can pick it up with our, with our handheld radio mm -hmm. and listen to that. Um, from inside the house, if we try to transmit, they can't hear us. But if we go outside... We can we can get into the repeater. It's kind of quiet, but again, that's eighteen miles away, nineteen miles away, something like it's that. Pushing it. So that's that's pushing it, and uh, you got to figure there's also like obstructions and neighborhoods and yeah. stuff like that in between us. So it's a really good distance. Um, now, further than that, or you know, better distances than that is when you start getting into uh, the general license and the extra license, and then you get into HF radio. With HF radio, though, um, typically you're going to have to set up an antenna and, uh, you know, you need to do some research and figure out the different types of antennas and antennas that work best for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But you can easily, easily reach hundreds of miles. Um, we did a ham radio amateur field day this last summer. And, you know, we used an antenna that I built in the garage. I took a couple hours, put it together in the garage, and we went out there. And my best contact was from Texas to Alberta, Canada. And we weren't Canada. using any other stuff. We had our <laughs> generator with the power going into our radio and we wasn't got there out to Canada. Who reached Hawaii? Yeah. That was there's, CW though, wasn't there's, it? There's yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were uh yeah, they were doing Morse code and those guys were reaching all over. They got to Hawaii. Um and depending on how much you really want to get into this and some of the higher end radios and higher end antenna systems, you know, one of the guys that was out there had this antenna that was like 60 feet up in the air and he was reaching people in Europe and, you know, way, you know, 8,000 miles away, 7,000 miles away, something like that. But the point is, um, you know, these various licenses have different you know, capabilities, the different frequencies that you can get into, but there's just so much to learn and to prepare yourself. Yeah. So ham, we believe is far superior than, than any other. I mean, we had CB for a really long time and we thought it was great. Yeah. We're reaching all the Jeeps. You know, we took it to a lot of Jeeps. Uh, Jeep meetups and you know, yeah, we, we were talking, you know, a whole mile, mile and a half yeah, out. That was that's awesome, fantastic, right? Um, but it was also really terrible signal, um, not like a terrible um, uh, receiving, you know, yeah. like it was just staticky. With this, you know, it's just so clear, even at the 20 miles, you know, from the repeater, it's just so 
clear. You know, it's just a huge, huge difference. We have experienced the pre-ham, okay? And um, we know that there's a, just an astronomical difference. Now, let me show you just a few comparisons to the ham just to give you kind of an idea um, of what else is out there. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna talk about is walkie-talkies. Now, with these kind of walkie-talkies, this is the Midland. This is a very popular walkie-talkie brand, two-way radio, has 36 channels, you know, 121 privacy codes, NOAA weather radio, all this good stuff, right? And it says up to 32 miles, which um, I do not believe at all, mainly because it says down here 32-mile range, and then it says longer range communication in open areas with little or no obstruction. Nowhere does it say that it um, this is a line of sight 32 miles. This has to be a line of sight 32 miles. This is a walkie-talkie, okay? This is not... Um, you know, you're not using repeaters, you're not using anything. You would have to be in a wide open field for it to get, you know, a 32 mile range wide open field in order to get those 32 miles. You would have to be like mountaintop to mountaintop 32 miles in order to get that. In fact, Step 1 Survival just did a, um, a test on these and he got max about four-ish miles. Um, that was just kind of around his area with, you know, obstructions such as houses, buildings, trees, you know, going up hills, down hills, all those sorts of things. And it will affect the range. Okay. Now let's say you are getting just about four miles. Is four miles enough for you? Is that something that you guys can, can deal with? You know, then these walkie talkies would be something that would be good for you. You know, walkie talkies are, are great for, you know, just kind of messing around, you know, if you, need to get a hold of somebody within, you know, a few mile range, one to four mile range, something like that, then these walkie-talkies are great, you know. Um, I'm sure that they, you know, are fine. They don't have super clear reception all the time. Um, they will have, you know, static. But, you know, it does get the NOAA, but so does our bail fangs, our bow fangs. You know, they get the NOAA weather radio as well. Um, and so do most radios. They get, you know, AM, FM, just a regular AM, FM radio gets the NOAA weather radios. Um, so there's um, that. Or, um, now I have tried these. This is the Gotenna. We got the Gotennas when they were first um, out and we were so disappointed with them. We tried them with line of sight and we got barely, barely a quarter of a mile. It says um, it typically gets up to four miles point to point range. And with point to point, we were barely getting a quarter of a mile. I'm not sure who is getting four miles. Now they do have others. Um, they have, let's see, they also have like the Pro, um, which says that it can get up to, oh, this one doesn't say, but it does say five watts VHF, UHF. So this one, the Pro might actually be something to look into, but as far as just like the baseline Gotenna, that's not, you know, this mesh or uh, whatever it is. As far as this baseline, this mesh, this is not something that I would personally recommend. Uh, if you're going to go for something like this um, that's attached to your smartphone where you can text and get GPS and things like that, um, then this is something to look into. And it is attached to your cell phone and you do need a network in order to connect to it, but you can apparently um, connect to it without uh, cell service, you just need your Bluetooth on. Now, we tried this Beartooth recently on a recent hunting trip and we were so disappointed with it. But it does say non line of sight, two miles for voice and four miles for text. This four miles for text is completely inaccurate. We only got maybe a quarter miles of text and then it completely stopped working. Um, we didn't even try voice. Now this says line of sight. I was, I, I went into a forest, but as far as line of sight go, the only obstructions were trees. So I should have still been able to get my four miles of text um, because I basically just went straight out into the woods and, you know, so like it was a straight line out and then I was trying to text a quarter mile in and it wouldn't text. It just stopped working. 
and it only does have one watt of transmit power so that is something to keep in mind and this is a bluetooth connection it's it's kind of like the gotenna in the sense that it uses your bluetooth and you don't need cell reception uh, to use it this is something that connects to your iPhone or Android, you know, a smartphone device. This is not like a standalone walkie-talkie or anything. I do also want to talk about the Citizens Band Radio, also known as the CB Radio. Um, we had a CB for a long time, as I, I had said before, and um, the amount of range that you can get with it, we found, is that you can only get about, in be, you know, a couple miles range. It's not very far at all. And it's very staticky, very difficult. Even with, you know, all the antennas and things that you can get, it is still very, very um, difficult to sometimes hear even within those one to three mile ranges. But we thought it was the most amazing thing, you know, pre-ham life. It is used, the CB radio is used by a lot of truckers because they are usually within, you know, a couple mile ranges of each other when they're talking to each other. So it is popular for that. And when we were in our Jeep groups, you know, it was popular for that because we're in such a small quarters with each other. So it did just fine. It's definitely a short wave radio though. Like I said, anywhere from one to three, maybe, you know, pushing it a little bit past that, but it's, it's kind of on the same um, level as a walkie talkie, I would say, um, from our experience and from everybody else's uh, experience that um, we've talked to as well. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the GMRS, which is the General Mobile Radio Service. A lot of people have told me that they rely on GMRS to get, um, you know, with their communication. However, something with the GMRS that you have to keep in mind is that you still need a license in order to get to GMRS. But a couple of um, range here, it uses um, its UHF. And with line of sight distance on, um, you know, with a radio horizon with an antenna, a typical range is about one or two miles. Uh, mobile units have higher antennas in a range about five miles. A GMRS repeater with an antenna that is high above the ground terrain can extend the usage range over a wide area up to 20 miles radius around the repeater station. So um, theoretically, you know, if you had the, a GMRS repeater uh, somewhere around, you could get maybe up to that 20-ish miles range. Um, but it would really depend on the type of terrain as well. But generally, if you don't have um, the a repeater, it's only about anywhere from one to five miles, depending on any obstructions and things like that. But you still need a license, but it's just not as complex as the ham license. And that's why a lot of people prefer it over ham, because you basically just um, apply for it and get it. Okay, so after hearing all of this information, I want you guys to take all of this with a grain of salt. And when it comes to your needs, okay, while we need that, you know, long distance, that 20 plus miles in some cases, you may only need a few miles, right? So like maybe a handheld will be really good for you. Um, you know, maybe a, a CB will be okay for you, but, um, you know, you really do have to think about the obstructions are going to be in the way, you know, if you live in a city, um, you know, CB and handhelds are definitely going to be very decreased mountainy areas, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, and you have to just consider all of these things. You know, if you're only using these like on the farm to connect, you know, from one person to the other, handheld may be great, you know, but we're just giving you some information here. As you can tell, we're big ham fans. Okay. <laughs> we love ham, 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 ham. <laughs> and these little radios are so cheap too. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah, so Super cheap. yeah, everybody starts out with the bail things or bail things or however you say it. So, <laughs> um, I a lot know. of a lot of people knock them because they they're made in China and they are you know they tend to be cheap radios. Yeah. But you know, for twenty thirty dollars, you get an extended battery, you get yeah. the extended antenna. They actually really are champs, and they work good really little, well. Good little emergency radios. Yeah, of course there are lots of other radios, lots of other things to consider. But I hope that this video has uh, helped you make informed choices 
And um, if you ever have any questions about anything, uh, just uh, let us know. Thank you all so much for watching. Conquer tomorrow by preparing today. Talk to you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.